Hey guys, Mark from Copper vs Glass, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a rundown on smartphone storage. Now I know that doesn't sound very interesting when you hear it like that, but what it's basically going to be is obviously most people buy a phone for the storage, be it 16, 32, 64, but how much storage do you actually get for that money? Well, what we're going to be doing today is giving you a rundown of some of the top smartphones in terms of the amount of storage that you're going to be getting. So let's take a look now at how much storage you actually get when you think you're buying a 16 gig phone. Now I'm going to be doing this list slightly different to previous top 10s that I've done. I've done a top 10 smartphones and things like that. This one's going to be slightly different in the fact that it's going to go from the best in terms of storage right down to the worst in terms of the internal storage that you're going to be getting. Now obviously the phones I'm going to be working with are going to be 16 gigabyte models. Um, now I've used 16 because I think that's the one that most people go for. Um, for things like price, it's definitely the cheapest option on a contract or buying a phone outright. And also just for the fact that if you see a lot of people with iPhones, they've got 16 gig iPhones phones or if they've got something like a Samsung Galaxy S4 then they've got a 16 gig and they've put an SD card in there for additional storage. So overall I'm going to be working with 16 gig phones and I'm going to be basically telling you how many gigabytes of data you actually get with that 16 gig phone that you've purchased. Now we're going to be starting off with the best phone that I've found in terms of storage and that is the Google Nexus 5. Now the Nexus 5 is going to be coming with 12.28 gigabytes worth of storage. Now the main reason for this is the fact that it is a Nexus device. The software that it's going to be running is very light software, doesn't really take up much room, and just in general the internals don't really use a lot of space in terms of the storage that you're going to be getting. So overall if you are looking for a 16 gig phone where you are going to be getting the most amount of storage for the price that you're going to be paying, you definitely can't go wrong with the Nexus 5. Second on the list is going to be the iPhone 5S. Now the iPhone 5S only just slightly falls behind what you're going to be getting with the Nexus 5 and that's going to come with 12.20 gigabytes worth of data. Now again I would put this down to the fact that it's going to be running iOS which as we all know is a very simple operating system. A lot of people are able to use it because of how simple it is but in general what you're going to be getting with the iPhone is very good for the money you're going to be paying. Now I say that in the sense that you're going to be getting a good gigabyte per pound value but in terms of the actual price of an iPhone in terms of a 16 gig iPhone compared to an Nexus 5 the overall price difference is going to be a little bit more but if you do want an iPhone and you do want a 16 gig iPhone then you are definitely going to be getting a lot of storage for your money. Coming in at number three is the Moto X. Now again with the Moto X you're kind of getting a Nexus type experience with the software and that it's got the pretty much pure stock Android built into the device. Now the Moto X does have some additional features like Moto Assist and things like that which is why the amount of storage you get isn't as much as what you would get on a Nexus device but it is still pretty good at 11.87 gigabytes. So again when you're looking at the price of the Moto X either on or off contract again you are definitely going to be getting a lot for your money. Um, now obviously you can get a 32 gigabyte Moto X and the price difference is very minimal. In fact I think it's one of the smallest price differences between phones on this list. So overall I'd maybe recommend getting a 32 gigabyte phone um, but again even with that you're still going to be getting about 26 gigs. But in terms of the 16 gig phone like I mentioned you're going to be getting 11.87 uh, gigs so definitely very nice. Just before I get on to number four, you are going to notice that from now onwards, the capacity is going to be getting lesser and lesser. Now, the reason why is because the phones that I listed off at the very start are very stock in terms of the software that they have. There's not a lot of bloatware on there. There's not a lot of skin over the software that is pre-built into the phone. And that brings me to number four, which is the Sony Xperia Z1. Now, on the Z1, you are going to be getting 11.43 gigabytes worth of storage on the phone, as opposed to the 16 gigs that you're paying for. Now, the main reason for this like I mentioned is the software that Sony have put over Android 4.3 or in some cases 4.4 depending on which phone you've got and the software itself is a bit slow and a bit sluggish I mean it's one of the better looking skins out there but in terms of the amount of space that it takes up it definitely does take up a lot of space and you've also got those pre-built in applications like Sony Walkman, Sony Movies and things like that that also take up a lot of unnecessary space that you may not necessarily want on the device in the first place. 
Speaking of phones that have a good looking skin over Android, next up we're going to be having the one of the most popular, if not the most popular phone of 2013, the HTC One. Now again, this is going to be running Android, but it's going to be running Sense 5.0 or 5.5, again, depending on the model that you have, running over the top of Android. So again, with this, you're going to be getting that Android experience, but it's going to have a skin over the top with some things that you may not necessarily want. Now the strange thing about the HTC One skin is that there's not really a lot of additional things things in terms of applications. It's more about the look and feel of the actual OS itself. Now you do have additional things like blink feed, which again you cannot turn off, but I wouldn't necessarily say that that would take up that much space in terms of the actual phone itself. Now you're going to be getting about 10.44 gigabytes worth of space. So you're losing out on nearly 6 gigs of data on the operating system alone. So that's without putting any applications, any photos or anything like that on the actual phone itself. So again, if you are looking for maybe more storage for your money. The HTC One Max is 16 gigabytes, but it also has a micro SD slot as well. So I'd maybe recommend that if you are planning on putting a lot of things on your HTC One, and, and I would go with the One Max as a personal recommendation just to you guys. Another popular phone and a phone that kind of aspired the Nexus 5 is the LG G2. Now again with this one it's going to be running Android 4.3 or above and again the operating system is very heavily customized. Again like the HTC One you're not going to get many additional applications and things like that on the actual phone itself. It's more to do with the operating system itself. Now the LG G2 is going to be coming in at 10.37 gigs. So just under what you're going to be getting with the HTC One but still nowhere near the 16 gigs of that is advertised. Now unfortunately the G1 doesn't have any sort of micro SD expansion or anything like that which is definitely a disappointment but because it's running Android you may be putting a lot of stuff in the cloud so it may not matter to you that much but paying for a 16 gigabyte device and getting just over 10 gigabytes is not necessarily the best thing. Now the last three phones on this list are going to be Samsung phones. Now as we all know the Note, the S4 and the S5 all come with a micro SD card slot which is definitely a good thing. Now coming in at the third worst phone if you will is the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. Now you're only going to be getting 9.27 gigs worth of free space on a 16 gigabyte phone. Now I know that it does have a micro SD slot but as with all Samsung devices you cannot put your application on the SD card. You can use it for things like photos and information like contacts and things like that. But overall, it's going to be really bad if you want to load up a lot of applications. Now, the Galaxy Note 3 has a really nice, huge screen, 1080p, so you may want to be playing some games, have some movies on your phone and things like that. Now, as soon as you load up a game like Modern Combat 4 and put a movie or maybe even two on your phone, you're pretty much done in terms of storage, um, which is definitely, definitely a disappointment. Um, and that's why the Note 3, like I say, does come with that micro SD card. It would be a bit nicer if they could kind of dumb down touch with slightly to give it more space because that's pretty much the main reason which I'm going to get onto now with the second worst phone, which is the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now the S4 is only going to be giving you 8.56 gigabytes worth of free storage. Now I had a little bit of a laugh in my voice then because I think that is completely ridiculous when it's advertised as a 16 gig phone because you're not going to be getting 16 gigs worth of data. Now they could necessarily kind of advertise it with a lesser gigabyte storage, so say maybe 10, it wouldn't seem as bad at that stage. But then if someone's in a shop looking at a 10 gig Samsung Galaxy S4 and a 16 gig iPhone 5 or 5S or something like that, then they're gonna go for the iPhone because it's got a bigger capacity in terms of storage. And on a contract, the price difference isn't really all that much. Now again, with the Galaxy Note and other Samsung devices, you can put a micro SD card inside, but you can't use it for the applications as I mentioned previously. Um, now, TouchWiz has kind of changed a lot since the original Galaxy phones, um, but just in general, the software is very bloated. Now, with something like a Galaxy S4 or even the Note 3, they are very powerful phones, but the way that the operating system feels and works is very sluggish. There is a lot of lag. So the operator not only takes up a lot of space on the phone, but it also isn't optimized, in my opinion, for the software that has been given in terms of the hardware of the phone. So it's still going to be going very slow. 
And now on to the worst phone that I found in terms of a flagship phone in terms of storage, and that's actually going to be the newly announced Samsung Galaxy S5. Now with the S5, you're only going to be getting 8.1 gigabytes of free storage. Now for a flagship model in 2014, I personally think that it's just unacceptable that they're only offering half of the storage that you are actually paying for or what is advertised. Now again, TouchWiz going from the S5, to the S5 has definitely been changed. There's a lot, it's a lot flatter and things like that. Um, but overall, it's a bit of a joke in terms of what you're going to be paying for compared to the actual gigabytes that you're going to be getting. So in terms of the worst phone, it's definitely going to be the Samsung Galaxy S5. And I would recommend either looking at an S4 if you are looking for a Samsung device because the S5 isn't that big a step up anyway. And just in general, the storage is pretty much as bad as each other on either one. So very disappointing there with the Samsung Galaxy S5, and considering that Samsung are really pushing it as their flagship device, the amount of storage that you get is pretty pitiful for what you're gonna be paying. And that's pretty much gonna do it, guys. So the main thing that I wanted to get out of this video is be sure of the phone that you want before you buy it in terms of the storage. Also, there's a lot of phones out there, a lot of really good phones out there, but you may not always be getting what you think you're actually paying for. Do leave a comment down below if you enjoyed this video and if you've got any thoughts and opinions on the storage issue that is currently going on with the smartphone market. Be sure to add us on Google Plus and also on Twitter. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass and I will catch you guys in the next video.